Yeah, can everybody hear us okay? Rob, are we recording? Yep, good to go. Okay, if we can, just to remind everybody, we're going to put a 2.30 embargo on this today. So we're starting just after 1.30, 2.30 embargo. For this first section, start with George, please, from the BBC. Mikel, hello. Um, just looking ahead to the Europa League, um, what did you make of your performance on Sunday and digesting it and how different will the team be from the one that lost to Leicester? Well, I think there were two different halves. Um, the first half where we interpreted it really well what the game needed and we were very dominant, we were very aggressive. <clears throat> we won the ball back in really good areas and we didn't give the ball away in any dangerous areas. Apart from that, we created enough chances for sure. Um, to go ahead on the on the score, we didn't manage to do that. We scored a goal that was disallowed. And the second half, we started probably fatigue-wise to make some more and more mistakes in, in more difficult areas and not be as ineffective and as threatened as we should have been um, to finalize the game stronger. And the moment that uh, we created uh, an open space, they had a really good action and uh, and we conceded the goal. So I think it was a... We lost the game from a very small margin and um, and disappointed because um, we should have done a little bit better there. They may not be playing tomorrow night, but are you concerned about the lack of goals from Aubameyang and Lacazette? Well, from everybody, when we play at home and we are not able to, to score a goal, um, I'm concerned. I'm concerned about the second half that we should have done better. We only, I think I had uh, the chance from, from Hector, you know. They didn't have anything, to be fair, not the same after, till after 75 or 80 minutes. But it still is something that we have to improve in this final set, the solutions that we have to give them to attack better, to be more continuous, to be able to sustain attacks in longer periods and put the ball in the box more. And um, we've been working on that, so hopefully we can um, improve it. Um, is David Luiz out tomorrow? Is Mustafi playing? And the, the first question is, have you offered him a new contract, Mustafi? <laughs> well, uh, to the first two with David, uh, he is still having um, some discomfort in that area. Musti is completely fit uh, to play and obviously the internal contractual situations, they're going to be discussed internally. But by the sounds of that, you want to offer him a contract? You're happy with his performances so far because he's well, split? I've been, I've been really happy with Musti since I joined uh, the progress that he's made and uh, the performances that he's had. It's true that now he had a, a long-term injury. He's worked so hard to get back in a position um, that where he is today and I just want him to show again um, the trust that we have in him and, and play him and, and uh, get the performances that we got in the past from him as well. He's had a hard time, though, from some Arsenal fans. So are you confident that there's an ability there and the fans will grow to love him at the end? Yes, I think there were a few cases uh, when we joined uh, in that position, you know, and what we try to do is try to help the players as much as possible, encourage them to play um, with confidence, try to give them the right solutions, and then it was up to them to show with their performances um, where they are. Thank you very much. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Ian at TalkSport. Hi, Mikael. Um, it's fair to say that you, you're expected to win tomorrow, expected to win well tomorrow. What sort of pressure does that bring? Well, the pressure is related to this football club that you have to win every game because uh, we didn't win against uh, Leicester or Man City. We lost 1-0 uh, uh, both games from very, very small margins and... Uh, and you can see the demands that everybody puts on us, which is the best thing because that's why we are the club that uh, we are and, and that should never change. You failed to score at home uh, on Sunday. I think uh, only Man City have stopped Arsenal scoring at home in the league in the, in the last couple of years. Is, is it a concern? And to that end, how much does Eddie and Ketty have a big role to play? Well, it's the role of everybody. First of all, mine to give him um, the solutions and the right structure to... To attack better, obviously this block and the, the way they set up is not easy at all. But uh, we opened them up in the first half five or six times and we should have scored the goal. Um, but something that we are not too used to as well because we haven't faced teams doing it uh, that uh, regularly. But I think it's a really good sign that with Leicester suddenly comes to your house and acts like this, 
is because they really respect you now and um, and they are concerned. And uh, we have to take that as a, something very positive as an advantage because if a lot of teams start to do that, I'm telling you that we're going to win a lot of games. Not really mentioned, not because of the, the mentions of the European Super League, but if you look so far, every English side has won every game so far in European competition, um, Champions League and Europa League. So how strong does that say our Premier League is compared to the other leagues around the world? Well, massive. I think, um, in the last uh, eight or ten months, um, the improvement of the teams in quality, in organisation, and in the way they are competing, it's been um, the biggest I've seen in recent years. And that's why you can see the, the difficulties of every team to win with, with big margins. And I think, in my opinion, it's not a coincidence. And uh, you can see that um, in every Premier League game. So I think uh, the league is in a great place at the moment. Last one from me. Mesut Ozil seems to be your uh, unofficial cheerleader when you're playing. On social media, he's getting right behind the team. Did so last week against Ajax and against Leicester. Um, Are you pleased with with what he's doing in terms of backing the side? And what are your comments about him also helping out kids in Barnet by uh, providing them with, with food? Well, I don't follow the social media you're telling me this um, right now, but I always expect um, everybody that is involved in, in our organization to be supporting the team every time we play. Okay, brilliant. Thanks, Mikael. Thank you. Back to you. We'll take some questions from our colleagues in Ireland. Um, we can start with uh, Dan McDonald from the Irish Independent. Hi, Mikael. How are things? Um, yeah, listen, just two quick questions. Firstly, like your impressions of Dundalk from what you've seen and, you know, in your preparations for this game. I suppose on the same team, because you're playing like an Irish side with a lot of players who've been through sort of the English system, are you expecting something that's more typical of a, you know, an English cup tie than maybe a, an average European game? Well, we've got some um, Irish um, staff here and I've been told a lot of positive things about them. What I've seen is um, a really determined coach that has found uh, a really good cohesion around the team. You can see in every reaction when they are playing, how united they are. Um, really well organized. They fight really hard and um, and yeah, they will be coming here with an incredible passion being the, the underdogs and that will give them a lot of energy and and I will I will expect them tomorrow to be full gas trying to beat us here. You mentioned your Irish staff. Is it Barry Solon you've been talking to about this game? Has he given you a little bit? Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Paula Hare from Irish Mirror. Mikael, how's things? Um, just wondering if you're familiar with the kind of the, the backstory to Dundalk's Italian manager. He Three months ago, he was coaching kids' academies in America. He'd never managed a senior team in his life. And then he was suddenly just appointed, a very surprised uh, appointment. Do, I'm just wondering, does that romantic aspect of football kind of appeal to you on a human level? I think it's a great story. And um, linking, you know, different backgrounds and, and different uh, countries into um, into that story, I think it's, um, it's a good one to hear. I, I watched a very long interview of his because I wanted to, to know who it is and what he's trying to do and what he's trying to express to his players. And, uh, and this is why I found out uh, what it happened. But straight away, he said that he could feel that the players believed in what they were doing, which is everything that coaches want. And I think they have created a really good chemistry. The achievement um, from last season obviously has given them a, a big boost. So big merit to them for the work that they are doing. And just finally for me, I, I suppose maybe in cup competitions, FA Cup, League Cup, you you know, you might get the odd upset, the odd crazy results. But at this level, European level, the chances of that happening are probably pretty minuscule, are they? Well, I don't know. This is football and I've seen uh, a lot of things in this game, so I don't take anything for granted. And I always expect the opponent to be at their best. And and after that, to convince my players on, on what we have to do to win that game and execute it the, the best possible way. And uh, and that's it. And we'll see what happens tomorrow. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. We go to James Rogers now at the Argus. Mikel, just um, from what you've seen of Dundalk, uh, what would you say their strengths and weaknesses are? 
Well, the strength, as I said, is the unity of the team, um, how work, uh, how hard they work um, together and how well they are organized. And then, yeah, there are a few bits uh, where they look uh, really dangerous to put the context um, against us in the same situation. is a little bit complicated. Uh, but yes, any team, you allow them time and space will create issues, uh, really strong on set pieces as well. And I'm sure they have prepared them uh, for tomorrow. So we will have to control normal aspects uh, that we have to do every week. Any particular player or players that you like the look of or think there could be a big threat against you? I will highlight uh, the team and the spirit that uh, they have and, and how they competed and against, against Mold. You could see straight away uh, how much belief they have in, in what they do. That's fine. Thank you. Thank you. Can we move on to Ian at Sky, please? Mikhail, hi. Uh, can I just get, get back to your, your team news? Um, you said that David Luiz is, is being assessed. What, what are his chances of playing against Dundalk? Or, um, and are you confident that he'll be OK for the weekend? To play Dundalk, there is uh, no chance and uh, it's a big doubt for him to play um, at the weekend. And the rest of your squad, um, William missed the, the match against Leicester. Is he OK? Um, Saka came off at, against Leicester, I think. Yeah, William uh, has been training with us the last uh, two days and uh, tomorrow he might be involved in the game at, at some stage. Um, and Bukayo was fine. It was a knock, but uh, he's been training fine. You're at Manchester United at, at the weekend. How big a factor... Will that be when it comes to your team selection against Dundalk? Well, we, we try to go game by game, but uh, obviously in the last uh, 10 days, we have a lot of issues at the back with the central defenders and we have to be cautious that we, we have to manage uh, that position very carefully because if we lose another one, then we'll be in, in big trouble. So, of course, we have to keep an eye on how we're going to manage the squad in the next two or three games. Well, finally, from me, can I ask you about the, the FA's Leadership Diversity Code, which uh, was launched yesterday? It's aimed at tackling inequality in the English game. Um, Arsenal have, have signed up to it. I mean, how much do you welcome that? How important is it? We will support in any cause like that that, uh, that brings um, equity to our society, opportunities to. To everybody, we were talking now about the opportunity with, with the coach from Dundalk and uh, we can we can open the doors for anybody in this industry. I think we should do that. It's much better than it was 10, 15 years ago, but that doesn't mean that we cannot uh, improve it and evolve it. So I think all these causes are really positive for, for our environment. Wish you well. Thanks, Mikhail. Thank you, Ian. Mark at the Press Association. Hi, Mikhail. Um, I just wanted if I could ask you about Rhys Nelson. Um, he's only played 81 minutes of, of first-team football this season. Is, it, is Was that the plan or were you hoping to have had him involved more by now? Well, uh, we end up with a large squad uh, at the end of the transfer market. Um, we had a few plans in mind uh, with Risk, and one of them as well was uh, to send him along to get more minutes uh, because of the competition we have up front. The reality is that uh, he's been um, really good in, in training. Uh, he wants to stay here. He wants to fight for his place. Is what he's doing and he's going to get the chances in the right moment. Um, what I'm pleased with is that uh, how he has assimilated the situation, not playing a lot of minutes in the first few weeks. As, as everybody can see, things are changing very quickly. We're getting injuries. We'll get more injuries because of the schedule that we have. And he will get uh, the opportunities and then it will come down to him to take them or not. Uh, it was pointed out in the in the Telegraph's Arsenal newsletter today that he actually started three of the first four games under you when you took over. Does he understand why he currently isn't in the team? Have you, do you have to have conversations with him and explain those situations? Well, I tried. Um, obviously, to compare things that happened eight or nine months ago um, is difficult in a positive or negative way all the time. Um, but I tried to have a a very open communication with the players and try to get their doubts out of their mind and try to talk clearly when they play or don't play the reasons behind. And, and most of the time they haven't done anything wrong. It's just because uh, there is a lot of competition in these positions and, and we are favouring other players in that moment and, and that's it. Uh, you mentioned he, the potential of going out on loan. Was that, 
why didn't that happen? Was it just not being able to find the right profile of club, or or did you run out of time? Or yes, it was a it was a mix, and as well because Riz was really convinced that uh, that he wanted to fight to stay here, and as well when you see that willingness, that passion, and um, and that security on a player, you feel tempted to to keep him, you know, even though that you know that that opportunities are going to be restricted and and he's not going to have a lot of continuity in his play. But uh, but things change very quickly, and if he starts playing and plays well and and he does what he can do, why not? He can start to play more games. Thanks, Miguel. Thank you, Nick. Hello, haters. 